Welcome to 28storms.com. This is a special early morning update on this Tuesday, August 16th. It looks as though we will have several tropical systems worth monitoring across the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific basins, so it would be a wise idea to get an early start on the coverage, and we will try to provide as much in-depth analysis and things to expect before they happen. The latest tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center indicates that they are still monitoring Tropical Storm Gert located to the northeast of Bermuda, but this storm is now moving out to sea and is no threat to anyone. So the main focus today will be on this tropical wave, Invest 93L, located in the eastern Caribbean, and we also have a developing tropical wave out here to the south of the Cape Verde Islands that has not been highlighted by the National Hurricane Center yet, and this will not be a significant threat to land for at least another week. But first, let's go ahead and talk about the latest outlook for 93L Invest. The latest Hurricane Center discussion says that shower and thunderstorm activity associated with a large tropical wave over the eastern Caribbean Sea has decreased considerably during the past several hours. Surface pressures are not falling, and development, if at all, of this system is not likely to occur until it reaches the western Caribbean in a few days. This wave has a low chance, 20% of becoming a tropical cyclone during the next 48 hours, as it moves toward the west at 15 to 20 miles per hour. Toward the end of this morning's video, we're also going to talk about some of the tropical systems in the eastern Pacific, but really more toward the Gulf of Tuanapec is what we're interested in. The first two systems toward the west are no threats to land, including Tropical Depression 6E. A broad overview of the satellite imagery this morning reveals that Invest 99E, this is the tropical disturbance in the Gulf of Tuanapec, is showing signs of organization, and it does have a 50% chance of tropical cyclone development within the next 48 hours, and it appears to be well on its way to becoming the next tropical depression of the eastern Pacific season. Over here in the eastern Caribbean is 93L Invest. Notice that convection is lacking, but we are beginning to see somewhat of an increase once again toward the very ending frames, and we don't really see our tropical wave in the eastern Atlantic just yet, but if we look off into the central Atlantic, we do see that there is an increase in convection along the intertropical convergence zone, which has also lifted a bit more toward the north compared to the last several weeks. And this could help to moisten up the atmosphere out ahead of that tropical wave. Again, the main inhibiting factor for 93L Invest when it was out here in the central Atlantic was all of this dry air. And maybe that dry air is going to be infiltrated by some increasing moisture from the south and east. And if we get a little bit closer to the coast of Africa, here is the tropical wave in question that could be a greater threat as we get into the 5 to 7 day range. The latest SIMS 850 millibar vorticity analysis shows us that we do have increasing low level vorticity associated with all three of the major systems that we're keeping an eye on, including 99E Invest, 93L Invest, and the soon to be Invest to the south of the Cape Verde Islands. The latest shear map also indicates that much of the deep tropics are favorable with light to moderate upper level winds, including the three areas where our tropical systems are located. We are now looking at the latest low level steering analysis, and this pattern should remain fairly similar for the next 72 hours, with one notable exception being the trough over the east coast of the United States. This trough should lift to the north at least to some extent, and therefore the tropical disturbance over the eastern Caribbean should continue to move in the general west to west northwest heading over time as this ridge over the central Atlantic continues to build back over the Bahamas. Also the tropical wave over the eastern Atlantic will not have much of a weakness to the north so this should also remain on a general westerly track and we also see that there is a secondary area of ridging across the Texas coastline and this extends well into mainland Mexico which will hopefully keep 99E invest just to the south and west of the Mexican Riviera. The following is a precipitable water analysis map and toward the end of this animation you will see an increase in vorticity to the south of Mexico associated with 99E and also the tropical disturbance moving into the eastern Caribbean. Now if this loop starts over again you'll notice that there really wasn't much in the way of a cyclonic signature within the first few days as the system was moving over dry air in the central Atlantic. But as it moves into the Eastern Caribbean, we're beginning to see a little bit more organization and structure. And also toward the end, we see that robust tropical wave coming off the African coastline. If we look a little bit more closely at 93L Invest in the Eastern Caribbean, we'll start off by looking at the latest TRMM microwave satellite imagery taken during the very early morning hours. And this image did capture much of the disturbance, although there wasn't really a whole lot to show. At this time, convection was really lacking. 
and there's really not, not that much in the way of significant banding features or anything of the sort, but you can still make out somewhat of a mid-level symmetric look to this system. But on the latest floater imagery, we can still make out a weak low to mid-level circulation just to the west of the Lesser Antilles, and the latest infrared imagery also shows that we do have a slight uptick in convection, and it will be interesting to see if we can have some convective persistence near that mid-level center, which would give this a higher chance of working its way down to the surface and forming a low-level center. The latest Caribbean water vapor imagery shows that 93L will continue to have to battle a lot of dry air to the south of Hispaniola, but overall the upper-level winds look fairly conducive, and this is a fairly healthy signature over the eastern Caribbean with fairly good outflow channels and a rather impressive look in terms of the signs of an upper-level high or ridge in place. The latest tropical model guidance are in complete agreement amongst all of the members that this will track between Honduras and much of the Yucatan Peninsula within the next three to four days and we will also go into whether or not the dynamical models agree and if this will actually develop into a tropical cyclone before it works its way into the Central American coastline but we will do that after we go into more detail and take a quick look or a closer look at 99E Invest in the Eastern Pacific and that tropical wave off the coast of Africa. As mentioned before, we're definitely getting close to having our next tropical depression in the eastern Pacific. We see on the latest shortwave infrared that there is an increasing signature of a low-level circulation just to the south of Mexico. The latest infrared shows a lot of plentiful convection on the increase, and the water vapor imagery reveals that the environment is fairly favorable. So this will more than likely be our next tropical depression and even named storm out here to the south of Mexico. But the fortunate news is that the models have come into better agreement that this storm, despite it forming very close to the Mexican Riviera, will be guided more toward the west-northwest away from land thanks to the presence of that aforementioned mid to upper level ridge located over the south central United States and much of mainland Mexico. Unfortunately, we cannot go into too much immediate detail regarding the African tropical wave as there isn't quite as much reliable satellite data near the coast of Africa and also we don't have as much model guidance to rely on until the hurricane center activates that system as an area of investigation. So we will carry on now with the latest 0Z guidance beginning with the 0Z Canadian CMC model and we will start off by looking at 99E Invest. You'll notice that the model keeps it just offshore of the Mexican Riviera throughout the forecast period and then in terms of 93L Invest it really doesn't show much in the way of development. This is the 850 millibar vorticity max. It safely goes into Central America without much in the way of development but on the other hand this is the African tropical wave that is forecast to gradually move across the Central Atlantic and by day six once this loop starts and stops again you'll see that it's developing a tropical storm by the end of the forecast period. Once you begin to look at the latest 0Z GFS, you will find that there is quite a lot of agreement between the CMC and GFS this morning. There is our system in the Eastern Pacific, narrowly avoiding much of Mexico. This is 93L Invest making its way into the Central American region without much in the way of development. And as the loop starts over again, here is the African tropical wave leaving the Cape Verde Islands and it steadily moves toward the west and much like the CMC model is indicating once it gets closer to the eastern Caribbean we begin to see some significant development toward day six and day seven. Now the models become really interesting when we turn toward the latest 0Z European. First let's get the eastern Pacific storm out of the way. Here is the vorticity max. This is the coast of Mexico. It's really hard to see I know but this is the best map that we have right now and as we go into day one and day two it safely leaves the frame while remaining just to the south of Mexico. But notice how unlike the CMC and GFS, we're beginning to see an increase in the vorticity associated with the Eastern Caribbean wave. At this point, by 48 hours, it's forecast to be just to the southeast of Jamaica. By 72 and 96 hours, we have development into a tropical storm based on this model solution. And between day four and day five, it moves into the east central half of the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, despite the CMC and GFS not forecasting development, it is rather significant that our best dynamical model, once again the European, is showing some tropical storm formation. And given the current signature on satellite, even without the convection, I still like the overall symmetric identity that it's beginning to reveal here. 
on the visible and infrared. And now with the European support, I still think that this has a fairly legitimate chance of becoming a weak tropical depression or a tropical storm right before it begins to move into Mexico or the Yucatan Peninsula. So interest there. Continue to keep up with that tropical wave, although I would not be overly alarmed right now as it looks like it would remain relatively weak even if it did become a named tropical system. Now if we look more toward the east, you may be wondering where our African tropical wave is. And sure enough, the European is beginning to see development or has continued to see development and the trend is continuing. This is the location of it by day five. And as we go into day six and day seven, we see that the storm has intensified and is more than likely a tropical storm based on this model nearing the US Virgin Islands in Puerto Rico. And then by day eight, and day nine and even day 10, look at this, we have rapid development into what is more than likely a hurricane just to the north of Hispaniola. And sure enough, the media would be going crazy if this solution were to verify as we would have a developing hurricane to the southeast of Florida. Now, seemingly as soon as we get development out in the central and eastern Atlantic, the million dollar question always quickly becomes, Will this system impact the southeast United States? And to be perfectly honest with you, that's really impossible to say this far out. You cannot give a definitive answer. But for purely entertainment purposes, we're going to look at the long-range pattern being advertised by the European model. And we're going to start off with the Day 7 forecast. The storm is expected to be over the far northeast Caribbean by this point. And we do see a lot of ridging over the central and western Atlantic Ocean. But notice there is a long way trough over the Great Lakes and New England states. As we advance this into day eight, we see that the trough amplifies or deepens even further into the Carolinas. Now, if our hurricane or developing tropical cyclone were a bit more toward the north and west, this trough would be certainly strong enough to steer the storm to the east and away from the United States eastern seaboard. But the storm is still relatively far to the south and east by this point. And as we go into day nine, we see that the trough is beginning to weaken off the east coast just a little bit. And we're beginning to see signs of the ridging begin to build back toward the west as we get closer toward Bermuda. And then finally, by day 10, we see that the trough is still clearly lifting out and continuing to weaken while the ridging over much of the central Atlantic is beginning to continue, or at least continue building westward. And notice how we're beginning to see a connection between the two ridges, with the other one being over the, over the northern plains. And if these two ridges were to be able to link up like this model is indicating, then this would imply that our developing hurricane could take more of a westerly track toward the United States east coast. But once again, this is for purely entertainment purposes at this point, and there is no way to really determine whether or not this model solution will verify. So just to summarize everything, we do expect that there will be a developing tropical depression just to the south of the Mexican Riviera, although it should remain just to the south of the Mexican coastline. In terms of Caribbean activity, we could still see a quick formation right before 93L invest moves into the Yucatan Peninsula. It could become a weak tropical depression or tropical storm. We cannot yet rule that out. And it will also have a slight chance of moving into the Bay of Campeche. So that's one other thing I would like to add. So keep that in mind, although this should still remain to the south of the United States due to all of the ridging to the north. And finally, as we get into the five to seven day range, interests in the Northeast Caribbean are gonna to have to keep a close watch on that African wave as nearly all of the models are showing significant tropical development or at least development into a tropical storm by the time that system begins to approach your local vicinity. And when all of the models are in strong agreement like they are now, that's usually a strong indication that we will actually see tropical development. And then in terms of any US threat, well, that's really just too far out to really tell. So thank you again for visiting 28storms.com. Don't forget to follow us on our Facebook and YouTube channels. So thanks again and have a nice day.